Okay. Good morning, everybody. You're most welcome to this session. We are going to be discussing geography paper two, paper two seven three stroke one two. And today we are dealing with a topic in relation to vegetation and climate in Africa. My name is called Alice Alwen from Mengo Senior School. So here we have a map with us drawn on the chalkboard, on the whiteboard. And it's the map of Africa. I'm sorry it doesn't have all the qualities, but at least it's a, a viewable map. And here the map is drawn and some features have been named and some features have been identified. So when we look at the map of Africa, the questions we have is, name the vegetation types marked A, B, and C. Vegetation type marked A, vegetation type marked B, vegetation type marked C. Now when we look at Africa, Africa has a diversity of vegetation types depending on the climatic the climatic conditions we have in Africa. The vegetation type, type marked A is tropical. Savanna actually, we call it savanna. Let's call it savanna vegetation. <coughs> savanna vegetation, that is vegetation type marked A. Vegetation type marked B is Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Vegetation type marked C and vegetation type marked C is desert. Desert type of vegetation. And at the same time, when we talk of climatic regions, we also look at B as an area experiencing the desert type of climate, C as an area experiencing the Mediterranean, B experience, C experiencing desert type of climate, A tropical, we shall change it to tropical type of climate, not savanna. Savanna is used for vegetation. A will be tropical type of climate. B will be the Mediterranean type of climate. C will be desert type of climate. And this one that is not named <coughs> is what we call the equatorial natural region. When I call it a natural region, I mean both vegetation and climate. It experiences the vegetation and climatic type of climate. Now, there is this one here, which I've named one and two. These are highlands though, but they also experience a particular type of vegetation and climatic type. They experience what we call mountain or mountain type of climate and vegetation. Mountain type of climate and vegetation. Now the next question is, name the highlands marked 1 and 2. Highland marked 1 is here. This is the Drakensberg, which is here. Then highland marked 2 is the Ethiopian highlands. This one is the Drakensberg, and highland marked 2 is the Ethiopian highlands. Now in Africa, we have very many highlands that have been classified according to their formation. We have volcanic mountains, volcanic mountains. We have what we call fold mountains. And then we have also block. But when we are dealing with Africa, we may mainly deal with two, volcanic and fold. Whereby both the Drakensberg and the Ethiopian highlands are good examples of volcanic mountains found in Africa. Other mountains like, for example, the Cape Ranges that are found in South Africa here, and the Atlas Mountains that are found in Morocco and Algeria, 
Those are good examples of old mountains. Then we also have, we have Adamawa and Cameroon. This one here is the Red Sea. And then obviously this one is the Mediterranean Sea. These are mainly water bodies that are surrounding Africa. That can also be said. The next question we have, describe the characteristics of any one type of vegetation named in A1 above. They told us to name two, three types of vegetation. They told us to name the tropical, then the savanna vegetation, the Mediterranean vegetation, and the desert vegetation. But before I go into the descriptive part, I have this to say. Questions on climate. On climate. And vegetation are questions that do confuse students. When they tell a student to describe the characteristics of climate, a student will end up mixing up climate with vegetation. When they tell a student to describe the vegetation types, the student ends up mixing up vegetation with climate. How can we do this so that we fail to actually mix up this? This can be done in understanding, first of all, the definition of climate and then the definition of vegetation. What do we understand by the term, cli term climate? Climate is the average weather condition average weather condition of a place recorded for a long period of time. Period of time. Long period of time. And this long period of time should be, for example, i.e. 30 years and above. It can be 30 years and above. Now here it is very important to notice. We must know what is weather. We are saying Climate is the average weather condition of a place recorded for a long period of time, say 30 years and above. Now, when we talk of 30 years and above, that means the elements of weather, which are rainfall, temperature, cloud cover, Humidity, pressure, sunshine, all these elements are recorded, measured, recorded, and the average obtained. Then when we obtain the average, we come up with a climatic status quo characteristic. So that means when we are dealing with climate and when we are describing the characteristics of climate, we must describe the characteristics in relation to the elements of weather. We talk about rainfall, we talk about temperature, we talk about cloud cover, we talk about humidity, we talk about pressure, we talk about sunshine. And if we are talking about vegetation now, which I'm going to talk about today, but still, I'll give you some tips on climate as well. Now, when we talk about vegetation, we deal with the plant cover. The 
plant cover of an area, the green plant cover. And this green plant cover is in form of trees and grass. That is it. So when I'm describing vegetation, I have to describe vegetation basing on the trees and the grass. But sometimes we have a problem in that when we are describing vegetation, we talk of trees and grass, and instead of describing in form of trees and grass, we say they. What do you refer to by, when you talk of they, what do you mean? So we need to talk about trees. Tell me the trees are like this. The grass is like this. Not they, what is they? They can refer to a person. They can refer to anything. So when you're describing vegetation, like this question is saying, describe the characteristics of any one vegetation type. So we are going to base our description on the plant cover because we are dealing with vegetation. We are going to look at how are the trees? How is the grass? Okay, now we are going to begin looking at, say anyone, we named Mediterranean, we named Savannah, then a savanna and then desert. So they said anyone. And always learn to mark the question. When they say anyone, that means there are options. They have given you three options and they're saying anyone. So you must first of all identify the type of vegetation you're going to describe before you begin describing. Otherwise, if you just begin describing, it means you want the examiner to actually guess to find out which vegetation type are you describing. Here there are three. We have the Mediterranean, desert, and tropical, and savanna. Now which one are I describing? You must first write savanna. Then you begin describing savanna type of vegetation. Hmm? In most cases I tell my students, this is the cheapest type of vegetation to describe because you live with it, you see it, even when you peep through the window, you can see characteristics of vegetation right from the trees that are around. The first one we need to know is that the veget savanna vegetation is subdivided into two. We have what we call the grassland and then the woodland. That is one. The grassland and the woodland where the grassland is dominated by grass with scattered trees and the woodland is dominated by wood but with some grass. So that is what we call the grassland and the woodland. And two, this in this area, the savanna, since we have said dominated by trees and grass, that takes you back to my definition that when you're describing vegetation, you deal with mainly trees and grass. So now this one you're saying that the savanna type of vegetation is subdivided into two. We have the woodland and the grassland. And I said the grassland is dominated by mainly grass with scattered trees. And then the woodland is dominated by mainly trees, but you have also grass there. And mainly the type of grass that is dominant in the savanna is mainly elephant grass and then spear grass. You'll find a chunk of spear grass, elephant grass. Then we also have some trees here and there scattered. So another thing is that the trees are deciduous. What do I mean by the trees being deciduous? I mean that the type of trees we have in savannah are the type of trees that do shed off their leaves during the dry season. They shed off their leaves during the dry season purposely to reduce the rate of transpiration. That's why I'm telling you that when they talk of savanna vegetation, it is the type of vegetation you see, it is the type of vegetation you interact with. So I'm saying that trees are deciduous. They shed off their leaves during the dry season and they have a thick cover of the leaves during the wet season. And the reason as to why the shade of their leaves during the dry season is just to reduce on the rate of transpiration, the rate of loss of water from the trees. The other one is that the trees have long tap roots. 
and I'm using the word trees. I've not said they. I'm saying the trees have long tap roots. Now, why is it that the trees have long tap roots? The trees have long tap roots purposely to go deep in search of water that can sustain the trees during the dry season. That's why. That means they have soft wood but for us being here being in the tropical we see that the trees are of hardwood species like for example when you talk of the red heart and so on so they are mainly of hardwood species the other one is that the trees are umbrella shaped the trees are umbrella shaped you find that the shape of the trees are mainly umbrella they are not straight, they are not very the trees are needle shaped leaves are needle shaped leaves are needle shaped so that's another characteristic of the trees that are found in the savanna type of vegetation now when you look at this i have based my discussion mainly depending on the trees and grass. I began by saying that it is mainly made up of the woodland and the grassland and I said the grassland is mainly dominated by two types of grass species. I said the spe spear grass and elephant grass. Spear grass and elephant grass. This is the, these are the two types of grass species that are dominated in the savannah. Okay, let's go on and look at the desert type of vegetation. Desert type of vegetation. Okay, now desert type of vegetation. Very scanty vegetation cover. When I say very scanty trees, the trees are scanty. The trees are scanty. Because when I talk of scanty vegetation cover, I still refer to trees and grass. So when I talk of vegetation cover, that is exactly what it is. I also look at the trees have thick bucks. The backs of the trees are very thick and there is
And all this is purposely to adapt into the climatic conditions that do exist during in this area. They have had, the plants have had seeds. The plants have had seeds and there is Why is it that they are fast maturing? Because the desert type of climate does receive very little rainfall and sometimes it's torrential and because of that it has to mature within the shortest time possible or else it will be affected by drought that may lead to crop failure. That's why you find that the type of plants here are plants that actually have a short gestation period whereby they can actually, they have a very small circle in short at the Mediterranean type of vegetation because they gave us, we are looking at the three that are appearing on the map, the Mediterranean type of vegetation. Mediterranean type of vegetation. The Mediterranean type of vegetation is slightly close to the roots because the trees have to the roots have to go deep underground in search of water that can be used during the dry
a sweet smelling sweet smelling the trees have Because first of all, the area receives heavy rainfalls. That's one. Two, the area also receives hot temperatures all year round. Now, the trees grow, obviously, try to compete for sunlight. That's why they grow very tall. The other one is the trees have broad leaves. have buttress roots. We say it's savannah, savannah, desert, and Mediterranean have tap roots because they go in search of water. Whereas equatorial, because it receives rain for all year round, the trees are tall and very huge. They the roots are buttress, purposely to support these very huge and very tall trees. The other one is the trees are made up of trees are made up of hardwood species. Hardwood species like mahogany, like that. So the hardwood species that are found within the equatorial include mahogany, the red heart, the rose. Those are found here. Those are the three species found in this area. Another one we talk about, they form canopies. They form canopies. The trees form levels. We talk of levels because of the way it grows. They form what we call canopies different levels like for example you find some growing like this and others so these levels are what we call canopies we also say that trees or the forest the equatorial type of forest has little or no undergrowth little or no undergrowth now what do i mean by little or no under undergrowth we are saying that the equatorial region, for example, if we talk in terms of climate, this is the type of climate that receives heavy rain for all year round and hot temperatures. Now you realize that because of that, the, tr the forest itself is thick and dense. 
thick and dense and it forms canopies. The canopies prevent sunlight from reaching the ground. And because of that, it prohibits the undergrowth, plants to grow underneath the forest. Because we know that for plants to grow, And the canopies, what we call the levels of the trees, prevent sunlight from reaching underground and therefore prohibits the growth of any type of crop. Now we say it's thick. The forest itself is thick. And that means it cannot allow crops to grow. Another one is that it has the trees have what we call climbing trees, climbing plants. You always like the Achids and so on, you'll find that trees, plants tend to climb through the tall trees. They climb through. And we also say, say that the leaves are evergreen. Are evergreen. The leaves are evergreen. equatorial vegetation region at the same time equatorial climatic region and I say that where we see the mountains here that's why we have what we call the mountain type of climate and vegetation so today we have discussed vegetation types and so on but I said in the beginning that in most cases when they set a question on vegetation and climate students tend to mix facts and I began by saying that when you're describing the climate of an area, I want humidity, pressure, <coughs> sunshine, then we also have okay, let's have those ones put there. Wind system, 